This is a Hungarian algorithm question taken from myarnl.co.uk uh, where I explain what the what it's all about. But essentially it's four athletes doing four events, one athlete for each event. Uh, we want to do it in as quick as possible time. Uh, now, looking at the times for Amos, we see that he takes 14 seconds at least. No matter what event he's going to do, he will take at least 14 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 14 from all of his times and call that his basic time, 14. It will take at least 14 seconds. These are now the excess times. We'd like to use zero. We'd like him to do the hopping race. Uh, we'll see later that that might not be the best idea. Uh, Biff will take at least 12 seconds. So if we take that off as his basic time and call what's left the excess, uh, Cecil will take at least 10. Those are his excesses. And Dave will take at least 9. Those are his excesses. Um, That, what we've just done is called row reduction. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the columns. If you look at the column for the egg and spoon race, all of them take at least three seconds longer than their basic time. So we could take a further three off that column. We could take zero off this column because Cecil's is already zero. Zero off that column. And we could take six off here because all of the runners take at least six seconds longer than their basic time to do the skipping race. Now we've got at least one zero in each row and at least one zero in each column. We've just done column reduction. The eight here, just to give you an example of what this eight now represents, Cecil uh, has a basic time of ten and the hopping race has a basic time of zero, so that's ten at least. But Cecil's got an excess of eight, so he actually takes eighteen for the hopping race. We will use we will use all of these red times because we want one number from each row and one number from each column. So we're going to use the the basic time for each row and the basic for each column and that will add up to a minimum of 54 that's if we can have zero excess from when we pick athletes for their races so what we're trying to do is pick zeros from this table that would that would mean that the red numbers are exactly the times there's no excess now can we pick a zero from each row and a zero from each column uh, the answer is no with four zeros and the way to show that is to try and cover the zeros with as few straight lines, horizontal and vertical, as possible. And we can do it in two. And that tells us because it's two is fewer than the maximum, the minimum, the, the maximum needed is four. I'll start that again. Uh, we could cover all the numbers in four straight horizontal lines or four straight vertical lines. If we can do it in fewer, then we haven't got an optimal solution just yet, and we have to do some tweaking. Uh, so here we can cover it in two, so we might have to do two lots of tweaking. It basically means we're going to have to use at least one, possibly two, of those unshaded numbers. And I quite like the excess to be as small as possible. Two is the smallest number. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak these basic numbers around to make that two into a zero. And what I could do here... Now don't, you never actually do this, so don't worry if you're not familiar with this. I'm just trying to explain how the algorithm, why the algorithm works. I'll, I'll talk why, later about what you actually end up writing. Uh, so the excess time for skipping, I'm going to so, sorry, the excess time for Biff, I'm going to add two two to make it fourteen. The reason is that will make his skipping time zero. I'm going to subtract two from skipping basically, and that will mean I have to add two to his basic time. The problem is that subtracts two from all the other things and makes his hopping t excess negative. That doesn't seem to make much sense, so I'll add two to all the hopping times to make sure that they're all positive by subtracting two from the basic time there. Now, if we look at Amos's times, all of his times are now positive. So we could bear that in mind by saying, well, if he's, if he's taking two at least in excess to his basic time, his basic time is 14, if he's taking at least two more for all of his events, we might as well make the basic time 16 now like that and we could say the same about Dave all of Dave's times the excesses are positive so we might as well say that his basic time is 11 at least then we've got a zero excess and I'll explain what's happened there and how, what you would write uh, well I'll do that now actually so from this table here what we've got what we actually did if you remember is we subtracted 2 from here from, we looked at the smallest uncovered number which was the 2 and subtracted 2. I'll just put subtract there because it's always going to be 2. Because we subtracted 2 from here we must subtract 2 from all of Biff's times and we added 2 to this number but the red numbers we don't really write normally. 
Now that made this number here minus 2, you'll remember. Rewind if you can't remember, but this was becoming minus 2. So we had to add 2 to all the hopping times. And that meant we subtracted 2 from there. Then what we did is we noticed that all of Amos's excess times were positive, so we could subtract 2 from all of Amos's times. That meant adding 2 to his basic, and we could do the same for Dave. Rewind if you're not sure about this. But that's what we did. All of those adding and subtractions are with 2. Now look at what we've achieved there. We've ended up subtracting 2 from all the numbers which aren't covered. So we took the smallest number which wasn't covered, 2, and subtracted that number from all the numbers which aren't covered. The numbers which are covered we either didn't do anything to, didn't do anything to these zeros, or we added and then subtracted like here, like here, or subtracted and then added like we did here. So these three numbers are unaffected. It's only this number here which is affected and we added 2 to that. And that gives us the basic rule for what we do with the Hungarian algorithm. We subtract the smallest uncovered number from all the uncovered numbers and add that smallest number to anything that's covered twice. Now hopefully you're get, getting a bit clearer as to why we go about doing that. Uh, I don't think I can explain it any better to be honest with you. Anyway, if I get rid of this shading now, just get rid of that yellow, because we're still not there we cannot cover all the zeros with three straight lines. Sorry, with, with we, we need we can do it in fewer than, than four. We can cover the zeros in three lines now. Uh muck that explanation up, but there's one, there's the second, and hopefully you can see where the third straight line is going to come there. And the task now is well we, we can't get a zero from each row in each column, so we must do the same thing again. The lowest number which is not covered is one, so we subtract 1 from all of those numbers that makes these positive that makes the a ne negative number there so we need to add 1 back to those numbers uh, and uh, uh, and then we look at this column the back column and we see that we can subtract 1 from all of those numbers and we get that uh, so the same thing again if you if you rewind you'll see that what we've achieved there is we subtracted 1 from all the numbers which weren't covered. If I just go back to where it was originally. We subtracted 1 from, from here. Subtract 1 from all those numbers which aren't covered. So we end up with 0, 5, 2, 4, 7, 11. And add 1 to the two numbers which are covered twice. That's the 10. Those should become 11 and 1. Let's see if that's what we did actually achieve. And we see that's exactly what happened. So that's what the Hungarian algorithm achieves. Now, can we find a zero in each row in each column? Uh, hopefully you can see that we now can find a zero in each row in each column. reason is because we can't cover all those zeros with fewer than four straight lines. And the answers will be a zero from each row in each column will be this one here. Um, let's have that one there. This one here and this one here. Those are the excess zeros. The total should be 59 and the times taken Amos for the egg and spoon race is 16 and 420. We can see that in the original table because we wouldn't normally write these red numbers down the side. Biff would take 4 and 6, 20. 14 and 6 is 20. Cecil would take 9 and 1 is 10. That's what that number should be. And Dave should take 11 and minus 2. Don't worry about the fact it's negative in red. That would be 9 in the original table. So we add that lot up and we should get 59 as the shortest possible time. If, you're, if you find it difficult to find where the zeros are, one thing to do is to look for any row or column which only has one zero in. And if you look in the skipping, there's only one person who has a zero. So that person must do the skipping. Then cross off all of Biff because he can't do another event and everyone else doing skipping. Now if Biffs are all crossed out, we can see that the backstroke, not the backstroke, the backwards running race only has one zero in, so that person must do the backwards running race. Cecil now can't do the egg and spoon, which means Amos must do it, and we can build it up from there. So if it's more complex than this, it won't be at A level, but if it's more complex, we can get round this by um, 
by, by simply doing that sort of process. That's called the Hungarian algorithm. It's not easy to understand. Hopefully you're a bit clearer to understanding it now.